Greetings, everyone. Hey, I'm doing something different today. Since we had that blizzard yesterday and the night before, it's it's stopped now, thank God. But I'm, I've got the blinds up on the window over here so you can see out. I know some of y'all live in places that doesn't ever get snow, so... And I'm sure y'all get tired of looking at my old hairy face. So I, I'm I'm here on the edge, but I open the window blinds there so you can see outside and enjoy the snow too. It is beautiful out there. Got icicles 14, 16, 18 inches long, and they're starting to fall, and they make a imprint in the snow when they fall. It's pretty cool. I've taken pictures. I'll put some pictures at my youtube community page for y'all to look at all right y'all i'm going to talk to you today about the tribulation and the rapture go into a little bit of detail i'm not a teacher i'm not a preacher but i kind of understand the bible because the holy spirit helps me and i've got scripture from four different places in the bible i'm going to share with you i'm going to start in the book of daniel Daniel's one or Daniel's one of the ones that prophesied the rapture and the uh, tribulation period and the desolation, the abomination of desolation halfway through the tribulation period. So I'm going to start in Daniel chapter 9 verses 24 through 27. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Y'all know what that's all talking about. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, Jesus is the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks. And threescore and two weeks, the street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off. That will be halfway through the tribulation period at the abomination of desolation. But not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with the flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That is the tribulation period. And in the middle, in the midst of the week, that's halfway through, that's when uh, Satan uh, uh, desolates the temple. Abom the, the abomination of desolation happens at, at, during that time. And in the midst of that week, that seven-year period, that week, which is the tribulation, in the middle of it, he shall cause a sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And y'all remember, I am not a preacher, I'm not a teacher, I have not been to the seminary, I just am a bald-headed redneck that loves Jesus and likes reading and sharing his word. So I, I can't teach you like a preacher can. But I know the Bible pretty good. Holy Spirit is my tutor. All right, that was Daniel. Now we got 
John. Chapter. Chapter 14. I can't hardly read my own writing over there. Verses 1 through 4. And this is Jesus himself speaking in the midst of his Sermon on the Mount. And, and I've to told y'all, it's been a while, but I've told y'all, you need to read and study the Sermon on the Mount. It is some of the best writings in the whole Bible. It's all Jesus speaking, and it is very, very awesome. This is only a few verses out of his Sermon on the Mount, and it's John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. And these scripture will be in the description box just below the title of this video before you start any video I do, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to tutor you as you read your Bible along with me. I want you to learn from the Holy Spirit, not from me. John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus is telling you, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And this Sermon on the Mount, he did just before, after he had been crucified, after he arose from the dead, and just before he ascended up into heaven where he is today. And he promised right here that he's going to come back and get us. So he said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. This is in line with Jewish wedding traditions. The father of the groom would select a bride for the groom. The price had to be paid for that bride. A price was paid. The son, the groom, he goes to his father's house and builds another house up on top of it or an extension out to the side. That was Jewish tradition back then. And here Jesus is saying to us, his bride, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. That's what uh, Jewish men did when they were getting ready to get married. They said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also. After he gets the after the Jewish man gets the house built for his new bride, he will come, pick her up, literally remove her from the earth, and take her to the mansion he has prepared at his father's house. And that is exactly what he's doing now. He's preparing that mansion. And soon he's going to come pick up his bride. Us true Christians lift us, literally lift us off the earth and take us home to the mansion that he's prepared for us. Everything in the Bible is going to happen exactly the way it was written. All right, next we go to 1 Corinthians 
and in the description box I'll put these scriptures in the order that I'm reading them to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 53. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. The, the Jews back then were concerned. They, they understood about the rapture. They knew about the tribulation period coming, but they were concerned about the Christians who had died already. Since the true Christians were going to be picked up, snatched up, taken away, at the tribulation, which they understood, what about their family and friends that had already died? What happened to them? Well, here the Apostle Paul is telling them, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And when he's saying we shall not all sleep, as soon as a person dies, their soul goes either to heaven or hell. The body stays in the grave or wherever they died at. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead those that have already died, the true Christians that have already died, shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. The dead will arise first in the rapture. They will receive glorified bodies and we shall be changed. We shall receive glorified bodies also. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Anything corruptible like our bodies right now cannot get into heaven. So at the rapture for the those that's already dead and for us who will still be alive, our corruptible bodies will be changed into new glorified in corrupted bodies so that we can make it into heaven. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Right now our bodies are mortal. At the rapture they will be made immortal. All right, that's that. And the last one is, oh, it's, I got another one. No, that, I just read that one. Okay, the last one is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through chapter 5, verses 11. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, the ones that are dead, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. There you go again. If you die before the rapture, you're going to be taken right along with the rest of us, if you're a Christian. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep or dead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, this is a rapture now, 
with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them, with the ones that had already died, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. He's not coming to earth that time. The rapture is not the second coming of Christ. He's going to meet us in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, for when they shall, shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light. Remember Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father but through me. Ye are the children of the light and the children of the day, and we are not of the darkness nor of night. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And by our Lord Jesus Christ is the only way we can obtain salvation. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, that's whether we're dead or alive, we should live together with him. That means we're all, all true Christians, are going to go up and live with him in the mansion that he is preparing for us even now. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. All right, y'all. There you go. I know I'm not a teacher, but I hope the reading of God's word helped you some there. The rapture is real. It was prophesied long ago. Everything is falling into place exactly like scripture said it would. And it will come to pass exactly like scripture said it will. And we true Christians will be taken up, snatched up, raptured out of here to meet Christ in the air after those that are already dead get taken up out of their graves, given new glorified bodies, and then we'll all go to heaven to the mansion that our groom has been preparing for us for 2,000 plus years. And y'all, what a glorious place that's going to be. But we're not going to stay there. We are going to come back to earth. Did you know that? We are. For a thousand years. I'll talk about that in another video. But we'll be with our groom, Jesus. So everything's going to be all right. And at that coming, at Christ's second coming to the earth, when we come with him, he's going to kick booty on Satan. He will create a new kingdom on earth 
and Jesus will be king of that kingdom. So it's going to be kind of like heaven on earth for a thousand years, and then the earth will blow up and disappear, and we will ascend into heaven for all eternity. Bam, y'all. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit loves us more than our minds can fathom. More than we deserve. Way more than we deserve. Can't we be faithful to them? I am now. I live for them. I love them. I thank them for everything they did and are doing and are going to do. Everything they do is perfect. And everything they do for us is with much love. All righty, y'all. I guess I need to cook. And I don't know what to cook. I don't have any idea what to cook. The electricity hadn't gone out, thank God. They said that with the blizzard that came through, it might go off, but it didn't. Thank God for that. So I've had my heat the whole time, had my lights the whole time, had my stove the whole time. The stove is gas, but it's got electric lighters, igniters on each burner. So I, I thought I could just light them if the electricity went off. I could light them with a, a lighter or a match or something, but I was told I couldn't. So I was kind of concerned, but it didn't go off. So the stove has been working, but I hadn't used the stove. I've used the microwave, but I hadn't used the stove during this storm. But I think I will today. I got to cook something that big beef stew I made several days ago is all gone. So it's time to cook something else to last me another few days. I love you, friends. I appreciate every one of y'all. <coughs> <coughs> I wish this cough would clear up. It's, it's better. But I still get it every now and then. When I lay down at night, I start coughing and coughing and coughing. That's it for now, y'all. God bless you, my friends.